Peptides for back pain. Here are all the different peptides, some that you might not even think are peptides, that can help with back pain. All right, so to understand why I'm including some of these in the list here, you want to understand what a peptide really is. That's just a short protein. So technically, any string of amino acids under a certain point is going to be considered a peptide. That's why insulin falls under this category, as well as you know, the more exotic ones like the BPCs of the world and Tessimorel and that kind of stuff. Or in the middle here, you have GLP-1s and collagen peptides. So that's where I want to start. Collagen peptides. Collagen peptides are critical because you don't get enough of the amino acids within them in your normal diet, typically. Unless you're like my wife, who actually prefers the chicken skin and bone marrow. In most cases, we're not getting a whole lot of the glycine, proline, hydroxyproline, all those that are in a collagen peptide. Why is that relevant? Well, if you have any sort of little micro tears, little minor injuries in the tendons and ligaments and all the connective tissues in our bodies, your body's kind of scavenging for how it can plug those gaps with limited resources. That's why collagen peptides have been shown to improve skin elasticity and other sorts of less obvious benefits here just because wherever you need collagen you may be relatively deficient in that and so if you give it really all that it needs you're going to kind of fix that bottleneck and the body can restore itself in certain areas where collagen is really necessary if you're going to be taking collagen for specific injuries that kind of thing there's going to be a separate conversation that we'll have on isometric exercises from dr keith barr and his research but typically if your body's synthesizing new collagen fragments and things like that in the body it's going to be using vitamin C to cross-link it. So it's the cross-linking that gives it that elasticity. So you need to have vitamin C in there to make sure the body has all the resources it needs to completely make that fiber it's creating here. All right, so then how is collagen actually good for back pain? It's not analgesic, so it doesn't actually directly attack pain here. But if it's part of a kind of recovery support blend, then it's going to help you. So we're going to go back to the collagen, vitamin C, general protein supplementation, and you do that with exercises that are good for back pain. So as long as you don't have any major acute structural issues, those are going to be things that we talk about in another video or two about compound exercise like squats, deadlifts, really anything that's going to help you get better control of your pelvis because every little unexpected perturbation of that pelvis stability is going to be felt through the whole back. So if you're able to strengthen your gluteus medius, the muscles that are going to help stabilize that pelvis when you're walking, so it's not dropping, that's going to relieve some of the strain on your back. Same thing with just general strength in your legs too. It's more of the secondary benefits that you're going to get of the collagen and the other stuff and better response to the other stuff. That's where the back pain relief comes in from there. Number two, GLP-1 medications for back pain. 